you do me a favor, will you just turn to, to a few people, greet them, uh, just welcome them into the house. Tell them it's good to be in the house of God tonight. It's good to be in church this Wednesday evening. It is. It is. It is so good to be here. And, and you know, I was, I was just thinking as we come into a time of worship, uh, sometimes, you know, we need to do what we just did to other people to ourselves, right? You need to tell yourself that it's good that you came. Because Wednesday nights, you kind of come in and off your week, you know, you're wearing your Monday, you're wearing your Tuesday. Uh, and I was just thinking of this verse in Hebrews. I want to share it with you uh, because it's, it's, I love this verse. Uh, Hebrews 12 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked before us. Listen to this, church. Fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer, the perfecter of our faith. Some versions say the author and the finisher of our faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Just with every eye closed for a second, we're going to lift praises to our King in just a moment. But I want us to spend a little, just a short second considering him. He's the reason that we're here. He's the reason that we have a reason to praise. He is the reason to praise, sorry. Uh, and, and I want you to consider the joy that he had, church, in going to that cross. The pain that he knew was ahead of him, knowing all things. He knew what was ahead of him. But the joy that he had, relationship with you, fellowship with me, eternity with the lost sons and daughters, was the joy that our Jesus carried to the cross. And if, if you're like me, church, on a Wednesday evening when you feel a little lethargic, when you feel, feel a little tired, that joy uh, and, that, and that celebration as I consider Him, as I consider Jesus, starts to, rise, pray, it starts to make praise rise in my heart. So even before we start singing, could you just start to say thank you to Jesus? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, God, that we are no longer orphans, that we're no longer far off, Jesus, but because of the cross, because of the empty tomb, Lord, we are now, Lord, joined with you forever. Lord, thank you that you are a victorious king. We're not singing tonight to a distant God. We're not singing to a dormant God, but we're singing, Lord, to our heavenly Father who knows every hair on our head, God, who is sat at the right hand of the throne of God. Thank you, Jesus, that you are our champion. And so tonight, Lord, hear our praises, hear our worship, God. We choose tonight. Lord, we settle in our spirits. We're not going to look at the things of this world, but we're going to consider you. We're going to look to you. We're going to fix our eyes on you. And Lord, we're going to give you the, the worship and the praise that you deserve. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Come on, let's sing together.
Jesus, Jesus, you're so holy, Lord, so righteous, Jesus, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. there's nothing but the blood of Jesus, there's nothing like it, Lord Jesus, nothing that can match it, Lord, Father God, it cannot be added to, Lord Jesus, there is nothing like your precious blood that flowed for us on the tree of Calvary, Lord Jesus, we worship you in this place, we give you all glory, all honor as we come around your holy table, in your holy temple tonight as your holy people. Oh, Lord Jesus, we just want to say thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Amen. You know, church, the best thing about coming around the table of the Lord tonight is that we come around this table under new terms. It's a table of grace where Jesus takes his rightful place and his banner over us as love. He loves you tonight. He cares for you dearly. And you're at his table with his people presented as holy. There is a new agreement made. Jesus says in 1 Corinthians 11:25, 25, this cup is the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood. The best thing about this new covenant is, is that it's for you, but it's not about you. This covenant is all about Jesus. He has paid it all for you tonight. I feel that there's so many people who are beating themselves up in this place, coming in here thinking, I'm such a dirty, rotten sinner. And yeah, you're right. You're right, but Jesus died for you. He shed his precious blood for you so that you can have a clear conscience tonight. You are clean. You are free by the work of Calvary and the work of Christ tonight. It's all about Jesus. Jesus says to you tonight, it's about me and my Father and what we have done for you out of love for you. Look at this, Isaiah 53, 5 says, But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him. And by his wounds we are healed. So all of the emphasis is placed upon him. His wounds for us. So it's all about him. But it's for us tonight. Jesus is so good this new covenant, these new terms, Hebrews 9, 13 to 15 says, Under the old system, the blood of goats and bulls and the ashes of a heifer could cleanse people's bodies from ceremonial impurity. Just think how much more the blood of Christ will purify our consciences from sinful deeds so that we can worship the living God. For by the power of the eternal spirit, Christ offered himself to God as a perfect sacrifice for our sins, himself for us. It's the beautiful exchange that could only be done by him. Yes, we don't deserve it. We couldn't earn it, but still he gave himself away. 
You may feel like a rotten sinner. You may be a rotten sinner. But Jesus paid the price for you so your conscience is clean tonight. We are cleansed to worship. So if you're in this place tonight, I want you to know, and Jesus wants you to know, that you are made clean by the blood of the Lamb. And you overcome by the word of your testimony. And what he says about you is the ultimate truth. You are clean. You are righteous before the throne of God tonight. So that we can worship. So that's what we're going to do tonight, church. That's exactly what we're going to do around this table of love and grace and mercy. We're going to worship the King of Kings and the person of the table. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 says this. For I pass on to you what I received from the Lord himself. On the night when he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took some bread and gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it in pieces and said, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us take the body tonight. Thank you, Jesus, for your body. Let's thank him for his body, church. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. In the same way, he took the cup of wine after supper, saying, This cup, and as we hold the cup up together, church, this cup is the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this in remembrance of me as often as you drink it. Let's take this cup together, church. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your blood supplied. Thank you for your blood applied, Jesus. Glory to you, King, Lord. Only you can do it. Only you could have done it, Lord. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are announcing the Lord's death until he comes again. What a declaration, church. What a magnificent declaration that we can make. We need to remember lest we forget all his benefits. We need this time. It's essential time to come around the blood, the blood and the body of Christ. Because if we forget, Lord... We are doomed. We need to remember tonight. We could never clean up our own act. Sin entered the world through Adam and Christ paid the debt he did not owe us. We owed a debt we could not pay. We are clean and in right standing with God, adopted into his fold, his family, all because of Christ tonight. Jesus was pierced for your transgressions and crushed for your iniquities. Self-pity is not your portion because of the work of Christ on your behalf. Peace is now your portion. Right standing with God is now your portion. Praise is your weapon to overcome and, and the weapon and, and worship shall be your response to the grace that was bestowed upon you through Christ Jesus on the cross. Let's, let's reap all those benefits tonight, Lord. Let's remember them. We are clean. We are whole in right standing with God, with the Spirit of God and dwelt inside of us only because of Jesus tonight. We have everything to be thankful for, everything to be grateful for, all because of our King, our friend, Jesus. Let's continue in worship tonight, Lord, or at church, because remember that we are cleansed to worship. So let's not miss this opportunity. The reason why we are made whole is for this intimacy, is for this time right now of worship in his church, in his temple. Bless your name, Lord. Worthy are you, King.
Yes, Lord, you are worthy. You're holy, you're righteous. Father, you're beautiful, you're gracious, you're kind. Father, there, are, there aren't enough words to describe the fullness of, of your glory. But Lord, still we're going to try and for eternity we'll be, we'll be trying. And Lord, we tonight join with millions around the globe with hosts of angels as we sing, Worthy, worthy, worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive glory, honor, dominion and power, Lord. Father, when we place you one more time in your rightful place as Lord of our hearts. Thank you, Father, that you saved us. And so, Lord, we surrender and we make you Lord. Have complete control of our lives as we yield them to you. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Church, can we give the Lord a clap? Can we give him a shout of worthy? He's so good. He's so good. You can take your seats. Why don't you shake a few hands on your way to your seat? Greet them. Tell them they sounded good in worship. Even if you have to lie a little bit, that is okay just this once. What a joy to be in the house of God tonight. So good. Can we just honor our worship team for blessing us, serving us in, in worship, and for Isaac for bringing us around the table of the Lord. I just love coming around the table of the Lord on a Wednesday uh, night is so great. Uh, we are just going to crack on with our service, church. We've got some announcements. Uh, and as I'm just giving these announcements, ushers, if you want to hand out the tithes and envelopes, envelopes, I almost said envelope forms. That's not a thing. Uh, if you want to give tonight, uh, you can give. The ushers are coming around. If you want to give online and you're watching online, uh, underneath me, by the magic of television, there'll be a little QR code that you can scan and all of the details for that. We want to thank you for your, your giving, uh, your faithfulness in that area. Uh, and it just means that we as a church can, can, can honor what, and, uh, what God is doing. We can serve the Lord. Uh, and we have a packed week uh, in our church. Tomorrow morning, uh, we have Feed Cork. If you are in need of food, uh, you can give the Feed Cork number a text. You can book an appointment. Uh, if you are uh, a Portuguese speaker, or you're not a Portuguese speaker but want to go to the Portuguese speaking service that is on tomorrow evening here in the church. Uh, and we want to invite you to join us in prayer uh, at lunchtime tomorrow as well. Pastor Andy will be on line for prayer. Uh, and then on Friday we have youth. Youth this week, God willing, will not be in the church. But we live in Ireland and so it might rain. So if you're a youth or if you're a parent of a young person, uh, I would ask you just check our Instagram, which is uh, Court Church Youth. To let, so we can let you know whether we're going to be at Fountainstown Beach, which is our hope and our desire, or in the church, which might be the case if it rains. Okay, so uh, just keep an eye on our Instagram. Uh, we, it brings us around to church on Sunday morning. We'll be here in the house at 11 a.m. We'll be downstairs praying at 10.30 if you want to join us. And then young adults that evening will be going on. Make sure you check out the young adult Instagram page as well uh, because we might not be here in the church. You know, it's summer. We want to make the most of the sun uh, as we fellowship together. Uh, Monday night prayer is on then uh, on Zoom. If you are not receiving the link or don't know how to get the link, then ask an usher at the end. Ask one of the guys on the front row. They'll be able to point you in the right direction, which brings us right back round to next Wednesday where Feed Cork is on again in the morning, and then we're back here for midweek service. And I just want to thank God that I got through that with only one mess up, because he's gracious. Uh, Ushers, if you want to come and take up the tithes, we're going to pray uh, for this time of giving. I want to personally welcome back Andy. He's been traveling. I've missed him. Yeah, he deserves a round of applause. He does. I, I missed him up until four o'clock when he beat me at tennis. Uh, but, you know, I will forgive him for that. But, Andy, will you come and will you pray for our offering this evening? Lord God, we thank you again for an opportunity to give. What a joy it is to give unto you, Lord. Uh, personally, I want to thank you for your goodness to me. God, for your provision, Lord. Even for us as a church, you've done great and wonderful things. We look around and, and Lord, we see your goodness. We see your hand, Lord, in every life that's here. Even those who are joining us online, thank you, God. Again, receive this, oh God, just as a small token of how much we love you. Lord, it, it, can, never, it can never ever buy your affection or your love, but just as a gift unto you to say thank you, Lord Jesus. We bless you and honor you with this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. Church, before we come around the word uh, tonight, we are excited that this Saturday we are taking a team to Latvia on missions. Praise the Lord for that, huh? I say excited. I'll be honest, I'm excited with a little bit of nervousness, you know. Taking, taking a group of young people abroad is, is, is a nervous thing. But I want to invite the Latvia team up onto stage with me. Uh, that's it. Don't all run at once. Up they come. We've got a few still making their way back from, from holidays. But these guys are just going to uh, greet you one more time, going to tell you their names just to remind you, maybe you've forgotten, uh, going to uh, just thank you as well. We want to thank you collectively. I want to thank you, and I'm sure they will too, for your support uh, financially. You guys came behind them as a church. It was so encouraging. Uh, you know, we haven't done missions for a few years because of uh, COVID, but to, to, to see how much the church came behind them. They were encouraged. I was encouraged. Uh, and we are going with our hearts full. But I'm going to stop talking. I'm going to let these guys introduce themselves. So we start over here. Um, uh, my name is Akram. Um, yeah, and I just want to say thank you also um, for everyone that's been so supportive of us and for everyone that has been so generous to you know, sponsor us and who have just opened their hearts to us going on this trip and who have just been you know, supportive of everything that we're doing for it. Thank you. Hi, I'm Clinton, and uh, I'm thankful for having the opportunity to go to Latvia and uh, mission mission trip for uh, spreading the gospel. Hi, I'm Leah, and I'm just excited to go to Latvia just to spread the good news <laughs> to these young people. Hi, I'm Naomi, and thanks for all your support in helping us go to Latvia. Um, I'm Micah, and I just want to say thank you to everyone who helped me come, everyone who sponsored me. Hi, I'm Simeon. Thank you for everybody for supporting us to go to Latvia. Hi, I'm Isabel. I'm excited to go to Latvia. And thanks for everyone who supported us financially and uh, through prayer. So thank you. Hi, I'm Tiwa. Um, really excited to be taking um, the young people to Latvia as well. Um, yeah, thank you so much for your prayers and definitely your financial contribution to our trip. Um, keep praying for us. Um, we're really looking forward to what God will do. Um, using every single one of these young people that you're seeing. Um, we want to come back with testimonies. So we pray that, you know, that will be the case. And just keep us keep us in your praise. Hey, church. My name is Ola. And just excited to go with the young folks and to laugh here. Yeah, just keep us in a prayer. And we're expecting a lot of uh, great things that God is going to do. And, yeah, thank you. <laughs> so good. They're a bit nervous, church. So, uh, no, we we are we're heading away on Saturday. Uh, I'd ask you just to keep us in prayer. We're traveling Saturday. We arrive Saturday night in Latvia. We're going to be at church in in Riga on Sunday, and then we're going to head to Norkalni, and we're going to be running uh, the youth camp for about 50, 11 to 18 year olds uh, in the mornings and in the evenings. We're going to be ministering to them, leading worship. Uh, and so, I, yeah, like Tiwa said, these, these guys, these youth, these young people are going to be used by God, which is such a joy. And it's, it's, a, it's a reflection of what Isaac brought us around the table of the Lord with, you know, we've been cleansed to be used. Uh, and what a joy it is to be used by God. But I would just ask, keep us in prayer throughout the week. Maybe even set a reminder on your phone, uh, because in the busyness of life, we might go out of your minds. But we're going to be there all of next week. Pray for traveling mercies that the Lord would keep us, keep us from illness, keep us from harm. Uh, and, and pray as well for the, for the mums and dads that are being left behind. Uh, for some of them, it might be the first time that their darling daughter or darling son is leaving. Uh, pray especially for my parents. You know, it's hard when I go away. Uh, so, you know, maybe just send them some, some gifts. They might need it. But we're going to pray together now as a church. Pastor Nick is going to come. Uh, but would you stand with us in faith, believing that this is going to be a week that God ministers, that God uh, touches them as he uses them as well. Uh, and, and, and the last challenge that I have for you, church, is that when these young people come back next Saturday, when you see them in church on Sunday, they might be a bit tired, but ask them what God did. Let them testify to you of how God is faithful and how he ministered through them. Pastor Nick. Thank you. Thank you so much. We have, just before we pray, we have a graphic uh, just for this tent for Latvia. Can we get that graphic up, studio? Um, it'll come up any moment there, but just before we pray. Oh, there it is. Um, we, are, we, are, we are sending this tent to the Latvian church to help them with their kids' camps. 
Uh, it's a 600 seater tent actually, it's a little bit bigger than the one you see here. Um, so we're, at, we're going to take up a special offering on Sunday. It's costing us roughly about 2,000 euros to get it transported with the trailer from, from Cork Care, Landbridge across uh, over and then a return trip for the driver and that's the diesel and everything. So we're going to do a special offering for that. That's going to be a great blessing for them. Uh, Yuri is driving the, the tent over there. Yuri is from Latvia. If any of you know Yuri, he's a wonderful man of God. Uh, he's got a real heart for that part of the world because obviously it's his home. But when he was a young boy, his mom died uh, when he was very young. I think he was you know, six or seven years old. His sister more or less reared him. They didn't come from a Christian home and they, they found a way to go to Christian camps. And that's why he is so endearing towards this camp because that's where he got saved. That's where he got touched. I mean, to look at big, strong Yuri, you, know, you think he's, like, you know, he's such a man's man, but he's a tender man of God. And, and God really touched him there. And he's got a great heart for these camps. And, you know, actually uh, close to a couple of thousand children go through these camps every summer. And they're a really tremendous outreach. And they're just a great blessing to just for the, for the early years of these kids to have some happy and good memories and mentoring. So if you can remember that for the offering next uh, on Sunday morning for those of us who are here. But I just want to encourage these guys because we are very, very proud of you. And I know sometimes you can feel a little awkward standing on the stage. Now you know who I feel, okay? <laughs> and, uh, but the, the, the Apostle Paul, he had a, he had a young, young man that he mentored. His name was Timothy. Now, Timothy, from the youngest of age, was quite a shy guy. Uh, the scripture tells us that. And actually, he was so shy, he was kind of sickly. He was nervous. He probably had fits of, ner you know, of nervous breakdowns or whatever. And uh, Paul had to kind of encourage him all through his life. But he became the, the pastor of the largest church uh, in the New Testament uh, in Ephesus. He became a tremendous man of God. And at the age of 21, he started to travel with Paul. So he was with the Apostle Paul at the age of 21. And Silas, he was mentored by him. And Paul said something very telling. And you need to hear this because... Uh, I started to preach in the streets of the city here when I was 12, 13 years of age. And uh, I wish I really had the confidence that I want you to have. Because he says, let nobody despise your youth. You know, let me read exactly what he says to you. Uh, no one should despise your youth. Instead, you should be an example to the believers in your speech, in your conduct, in your love, and in your faith, and in your purity. And this is what we, we know that you're already that sort of an example. Your youth leaders will not let you go on a youth a, a trip to represent the church here, to, to spiritually speak to other young people and to, to, to pray with them and, and love on them unless we know that you have a love for the Lord. We know you ain't perfect. But hey, I don't know anyone here that's perfect. But we do know that God's hand is on you. And we've seen growth in every one of you in your journey. So we want you to have confidence that we've got confidence in you, that God is with you. You're developing to be wonderful men and women of God. And, you know, do, let God do something through you and in you. So two things will happen. God will do something certainly through you if, if, you, if, you, if you make yourself available. But he'll also do something in you, a deepening. And that will be a tremendous, you know, um, weak testimony for you. So we're going to pray. We're going to lift up our hands to the Lord. We thought that was a great idea. I'm going to put it on my phone a uh, certain time of the day to be praying for you. And uh, that God will give you travel mercies. And you would have a wonderful time. There's going to be a lot of children there that don't come from Christian homes. Um, they come from abusive homes, come from needy backgrounds. And, uh, you know, they need encouragement. They need to know that God loves them. They need to know that they'll get through the, the darkness that they're in. They'll get through the fear that they're under. And uh, you just be the hands and the voice of Christ. Will you raise your hands to the Lord for our precious young men and women here? Father, we, I thank you for Ben, Lord God, and Tiwa, Lord, and, and for all the Lord who are leading this trip, Lord. But I thank you, Lord, even as much and more so for these precious young men and women. Already, Father, I feel so super proud of them, God, that in, their, in the hour, Lord, where young people are being noted for their foolishness, Lord, for their excess, for their absolute bizarre way of living, Lord, you are raising up a young men and women, Lord, that, Lord, that, that are pure, Lord, that are honest, they are righteous, they are upright, Lord. You're developing in them, Lord, a voice, God, to speak to a generation. And I pray as they go, Lord, they will feel a touch from heaven. They will know the nearness of the Holy Spirit. And indeed, you will do something in them and through them. And bring them home to a safe, God. Let there be no mishaps, we pray, God. We thank you, Lord, for that missions trip. We ask you, Lord, that many will be saved, oh God. Many will be touched by your gospel. That every child, every worker will be encouraged, Lord. We ask this now, Father, in the precious name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen and amen. Let's give the Lord praise. Amen. Thank you so much, guys. We'll be watching it in you. God bless you. Bless God. You get a thousand points for that, sir.
<laughs> yeah. Great church. We're going to come around the Word of God uh, in just a few seconds. Uh, Pastor Patrick is going to come and minister, but uh, it's just take a second ready your heart for what the Lord is going to say uh, and, and I want to take the opportunity I don't get the microphone that often so uh, no one can stop me but I want to honor Pastor Patrick uh, I want to honor his love his kindness uh, his service but also his hunger for truth uh, and I'm just we blessed to have him in young adults we're blessed to have him for years in youth uh, led it so so well you know the the, the young people that you see uh, I can't take credit for that the Lord can take ultimate credit for it but uh, Pastor Patrick is just a, a leader of leaders uh, and such such a, a godly man so we are in for a treat this Wednesday night uh, lean in be ready to hear from God uh, and let's welcome him up why don't you give him some honor as he comes Praise the Lord. Do you know, it's an honor to, to leave ministries in better hands than your own. Do you know, what a wonderful thing to see these kids up ready to go to Latvia. I'm so excited for you young people. I first went to Latvia in 2011, and uh, some of the youth actually who are in the ministry, I held them as babies uh, in, in Latvia in 2011, uh, outside of one of Yuri's many homes. <laughs> So I'm really excited for you guys. I think you're going to have an amazing time. Uh, can we pray church tonight and we're going to get into the word of God? Amen. Why don't you lift your hands with me? Let's pray together. Lord, we bless your name. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for the riches that are ours in Christ. I thank you, Lord, today, regardless of the day we've had, the week, the year we've had, we are yours and you are ours, Lord. We're blood washed and redeemed. Hallelujah, worthy is the Lamb. And so we worship you tonight, God. And Lord Jesus, I ask you for the, the grace, Lord, to bring what you've given me to your people. I pray that your bride would be blessed, Lord, as we come around your word. Give me what I need to deliver, what you've given me. And we give you all the glory, Jesus. We give you all the praise and all the honor. Amen and amen and amen. Folks, tonight I want to talk to you about uh, the rest of the gospel. The rest of the gospel. That's what I want to describe. I, I want to go into Isaiah chapter 46. We're going to read it. It's a familiar chapter, part of the servant songs. Uh, but I want to speak to you tonight if you're dealing with anxiety. I want to deal, uh, speak to you tonight if you're concerned, if you're worried. Uh, we're going to read a passage where God makes an appeal to his people to trust him. And you know that appeal rings throughout the ages. God is always appealing to his people to trust him and to not put your confidence in the things that this world puts its confidence in. Hallelujah. So when things falter and fall, we don't need to be afraid. Because folks, I don't know if you know, things aren't getting better, right? There's no return back to normal. We will not be returning to regular broadcasting. We're going a particular direction in society. We are. Now, I'm not here to be a negative Nancy. It's going to get good, I promise. You know, we're here for good news, amen? But there is a reality. There's a context. Things are happening in society. There's a declension that can't be denied. It can't be denied. But there's hope tonight for every believer because as things go this way in society, God is bringing us into a greater rest amen, the rest of the gospel. God didn't save us to be insecure, amen. God saved us so that we can be saved and secure. That's the whole gospel, salvation and a life lived in full assurance, even in the face of what we see around us. So let's get into the text today. Let's see, God, be encouraged, church. I tell you, God is so good, He's so faithful, and I'm excited about this text, so I'm going to start. Isaiah 46, uh, a little bit of context here. The children of uh, Israel are watching on as Cyrus has ridden in and taken over Babylon, and uh, the idols of Babylon, uh, namely Bel, who was the god of the sky, and Nebo, who was the god of wisdom, were taken away, these big or ornate statues, idols crafted by human hands uh, were taken away on 
horse and cart, along with all the idolaters as well. What a sight for the children of Israel. These gods that had been propped up as, as, as the, 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 the source of fertility and the source of, of uh, wellness and the sources of security and had been worshipped as such were now being dragged away by four-legged beasts. What a sight. And God makes a contention here. So listen from verse 1. Bell bows down, Nebo stoops, their idols are on beasts and livestock. These things you carry are born as burdens on weary beasts. They stoop, they bow down together. They cannot save the burden, but themselves go into captivity. That's the idol and the idolater, away into captivity together. Now listen to the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Verse 3. Listen to me, O house of Jacob, all the remnant of the house of Israel, who have been born from me from before your birth, carried from the womb. Listen to the word of the Lord tonight. Even to your old age, I am he, and to gray hairs, I will carry you. Hallelujah. I, will, I have made, and I will bear. I will carry, and I will save. Hallelujah. To whom will you liken me and make me equal and compare me that we may be alike? Those who lavish, lavish gold from the purse and weigh out silver in scales, hire a, hire a goldsmith and he makes it into a god. Then they fall down and worship. They lift it to their shoulders and they carry it. They set it in its place and it stands there. It cannot move from its place. If one cries to it, it does not answer or save him from his trouble. Verse 8, remember this and stand firm. Recall it to mind, you transgressors. Uh, remember the former things of old. For I am God and there is no other. I am God and there is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times, things not yet done, saying my counsel shall stand and I will accomplish all my purpose. Folks, is your faith lifting from the reading even tonight? Hallelujah. And look down in verse 11, I've spoken and I will bring it to pass. I have purposed and I will do it. Listen to me, you stubborn of heart, you who are far from righteousness. I bring near my righteousness. It is not far off and my salvation will not delay. I will put salvation in Zion for Israel, my glory. Praise the Lord tonight. Praise the Lord. What a powerful message to exiles. Exiles in Babylon who'd watched the gods of Babylon fall and crumble to the ground. And the idolaters, the people who'd put their trust in those gods, fall to the ground as well. And folks, we're exiles too. Amen. We're the people of God. We're in Babylon. There are two, there are two spirits at work in the world. Uh, there's the spirit of Egypt, and you can see it bearing out in, through cross, crushing persecution in places like China and in northern Africa. But there's also a spirit of Babylon. And Babylon is different to the Egyptian spirit in that the Babylonian spirit is all about the, the sort of uh, beguiling of God's people. It's, it's the nullifying of, of their faith. It's, you know, come in and share in the culture and adopt the ideas and adopt the mentalities. And somehow the children of God become no different to the inhabitants of Babylon. And they stop uh, having a distinction in the way that they walk in their testimony. And ultimately the spirit of Babylon will always render the children of God fruitless. So there is a spirit at work, the spirit of Babylon, and we're here in Babylon, folks, you and I today. And the gods of the high times, the gods of Babylon have been taken into captivity. Amen. They fail to carry and they fail to save in the hour of need. And now them and those that worship them have been lowered to the ground and swept away in the deluge. Just look around you folks. The institutions, the organizations, the philosophies, the worldviews that propped people up in the high times have fallen. Have you noticed it? Have you seen it folks? COVID, wars in the Ukraine, scandals, inflation. Not only that, but those who have trusted in them 
have fallen into depression and fear and are captive now to anxiety and heartbreak and hopelessness. Do you see the world that we're living in today? You know, AWARE did a national survey uh, this year revealing high rates of depression and anxiety in Ireland with 60% of those surveyed experiencing depression and 80% experiencing anxiety. Out of a test group of 1,200 people, that's this year. Amazing, folks. Listen, uh, uh, Dr. Susan Brannock said this. It's very concerning to see such high rates of depression and anxiety being supported. As a society, we've recently experienced a prolonged period of change and unrest with the pandemic and the subsequent economic, social, and psychological impacts. It's reasonable to expect this to have, an ex uh, uh, have affected our mental health and our ability to cope. Irish people aren't coping, folks. The pandemic, everything that's come down the line since, we are not coping. We're not. And of those experiencing depression and or anxiety, one-fifth feel that they've actually been treated unfairly because of their difficulties. Now look at this. Look at the breakdown of the 1,200 people. Financial worries was named the number one issue for 57% of people impacted by their mental health. 57% financial issues, followed closely by relationships, 44%. Family responsibilities, 41%. Topical issues like the current ec ec economic climate and housing, negatively affecting 32%. And three years on, 18% are still worried about COVID. Wow, folks. To me, I found that fascinating. But let me tell you this, church. While the world might be falling to rack and ruin, we must not be shaken. Amen. As the children of God, the world may collapse and the worshipers of this world and its structures may tumble into depression and anxiety, but it is not the portion of the believer. Can I get an amen? It's not for us to fall into depression and into anxiety and to look around us despairing of life because he saved us and he secured us. We're not to be shaken when the mountains fall into the sea. Amen. He is bringing his church into the rest of the gospel. Psalm 46 says this, God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in times of trouble. You know that ever-present, it means well proven. Hallelujah. Can I get an amen if he has a testimony of faithfulness in your life? Oh, he's well proven. Oh, he's the rock that never moves. He's safe and secure. That's our Jesus. Look at verse 2. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. Those mountains, those things that we once thought were secure, falling and slipping and breaking down into the storm that society is facing. Though its waters roar and foam, and the mountains quake with surging. There is a rest for the believer tonight. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Take, child, uh, take heart, child of God. You will not be swept away. If you are saved tonight, but not at rest, there is a confidence for those of us who are feeling that burden. You know you're saved. You know you belong to God. You know you're a child of God. You know the theology. You sing the songs. But if you're shackled, if you're feeling the burden tonight, if you're frightful for your future, maybe some of you have even drifted away into compromise, there is a confidence tonight for every one of us. And we're going to break it down. We're going to look at it. There is a rest for us all in the gospel. Folks, we have a father. We have a faithful one. And the father's heart, as we're going to break down tonight, is how we begin to walk in the rest of the gospel. A revelation of the Father's heart for us as we walk into more and more uncertain times. Can we get an amen tonight? Is there anyone in the house saying, I want this, I need this, this is for me, it's for you tonight. John Owen described this rest. He said that the rest for the believer means peace with God, that security in your standing, 
It means freedom from a servile bondage-like spirit and the worship and service of God. In other words, it means security in your sonship. You don't have to work for what's already yours. Rest means deliverance from the burden of the Mosaic observance. It's now no longer about following rules, but by walking out the inclinations of the Spirit through faith. Rest is about the freedom of worship according to the gospel. And rest means the rest that God himself enjoys. I want the rest that God himself enjoys tonight. We're not just invited into rest. We're invited into his rest. Hallelujah. Now, let me speak to you tonight. There are three types of people I want to speak to. The first type tonight are the people who are heavy laden. You're feeling the weight of life. And I want to speak to you tonight about a loving father who carries us. Hallelujah. And I want to speak tonight about to, to people who are fearful of their futures. There is a God, a father in heaven who is the author of our, fu our futures. He's the author of life. And he's the author and the finisher of our faith. And he has authored our futures tonight. And finally, I want to speak, if we have time, to people struggling to walk upright. He is the source of our righteousness. Hallelujah. Let's start. Folks, is life heavy? Life can be heavy. Life can be heavy. And sometimes we can feel weighed down by what we feel we have to carry. It's a reality. It's, you know, today I went to the hospital. I had to do a scan, an MRI for my back. And uh, I, I didn't relish having to go to hospital. But what made it great was half a court church actually work in the matter private. So I had a great time with Kevin and with Levi Cassidy, uh, who's excellent, by the way. I heartily suggest requesting Levi if you need an MRI. I just went in there and all that sort of thing. And it's funny how God peppers difficult times or otherwise strenuous times with just believers and fellowship and communion. That's just a tangent there, but it's worth saying you don't know the treasure of another believer, uh, the, the benefit of the body of Christ until life becomes heavy. But tonight, if you are weighed down by what you feel you have to carry, he is carrying you. Amen. He's carrying you. He is a loving father. And folks, the, the father heart of God is the keeping power of the gospel. We're going to see that tonight. Look at verses 3 and 4. Listen to me, descendants of Jacob, all you who remain in Israel. I have cared for you since you were born. Folks, I love it. Yes, I carried you before you were born. Some of you need to know that before you were ever carried in your mother's womb, you were carried in the mind of God. He knew you in eternity past. You were carried in the mind of God before you were ever in your mother's womb. And God says, verse 4, I will be your God throughout your lifetime until your hair is white with age. Praise the Lord, which may not be too long if you work in youth ministry. Ask Ben. <laughs> until your hair is white with age. That means until you reach maturity. Glory to God. I will be your God throughout your lifetime. I made you and I will care for you. Oh, hallelujah tonight. We don't serve a father who just sort of just produces us and walks away. We're in a fatherless generation. 74% of black young people in the States are without fathers. Amazing. It's amazing. The epidemic of fatherlessness in this society. You might be the victim of fatherlessness, but God Almighty, the Father, is not an absentee father. He's not an absentee father. I made you and I will bear responsibility for you. I made you and I will carry you. Glory to God tonight. Glory to God tonight. I'll carry you along and I'll save you even to your old age. I am he. I'm the one. I'm the one. I will carry you. I have made and I will bear even I will carry you and deliver you. Folks, don't put your confidence in anything else to carry you. Don't put your confidence in anything else to bring you through. Don't fret now that the things that you trusted are gone. God's question to you tonight is, haven't I always carried you? Haven't I always carried you? Folks, some of you don't know how power, powerful this is because you haven't been dropped yet. 
You haven't been dropped yet by people. You haven't been dropped yet by organizations. You haven't been dropped yet. Folks, I think some of us here tonight know what it's like to be dropped. I, as I was preparing this, I was thinking of Saul. Uh, or sorry, I was thinking of uh, Mephibosheth, who when news that Saul's house broke, the maid who was carrying him ran for her life. Back in those days, um, he, Mephibosheth would have had to have been murdered so that there would be no threat to the house of David or whoever succeeded the throne. And so she ran and she fell and his feet were crushed. And it's, it's a horrible thought. Sometimes you're dropped by things that other people have done. If you can think about it, it was Saul and it was John. It was Saul and Jonathan paid the price and Mephibosheth paid the price. And sometimes you're dropped and it wasn't your fault, but you, you're paying the price. Amen. Yet there is a God who carries you tonight. This is powerful for anyone who's ever been dropped. Deuteronomy 131, the Lord is your God who goes before you and will fight for you just as you saw him do for you in Egypt. That's in salvation. He's the God who fought for you and carried you through in salvation. And verse 31, and in the wilderness and in the desert. Psalm 62 says he's the rock of our salvation. 1 Corinthians 10.4 says that the rock followed the children of Israel into the wilderness. He's not just the rock that set you free. He's the rock that followed you into the wilderness of life to be a secure footing place for you in the wilderness where the Lord your God carried you as a man carries his son. Hallelujah. All the way which you traveled until you reached this place as a man carries his son. I tell you what, there's nothing like picking your child up in your arms. There is nothing like it. There is no joy like it. I pick my son up. I pick my daughter up and the world stops for a moment. The comfort that there's something about holding your children in your arms. Folks, if you don't know that that's the Father's heart for you tonight, know it now. God's heart is to embrace his children, his creation. I will carry you because you are my child. Not because of your performance, not because of, of who you, of, of, of your, your, your performance, your, 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 your behavior, not because of you, but because you're my child, because I made you, I will bear you to maturity, to old age. Remember in eternity past, he carried you in his mind. You were carried in the mind of God before your own mother carried you in the room. From the first day you drew breath, he was there. Hallelujah. I was there when both my children were delivered in the delivery room. It was electric. It was terrifying. But I had a confidence that there was a God who, who, who orchestrated everything in that room to bring my children out safely. Uh, I've told the story about how my son almost died in delivery. God was there. God was there. When that boy's umbilical cord was wrapped around his neck five times. God was there, hallelujah, to deliver you, to carry you through into this world and through this world. God is a, I tell you, if this is all you get tonight, he is a present father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, have you ever been carried by him through something? Have you ever been carried by him through cancer, through bereavement, through heartbreak? through rejection. Have you ever been carried? I remember the day Laura and I went for a, a scan uh, for Georgia. It was about 20 something weeks in and Laura called me. I was just waiting outside and uh, as you do, as husbands do. And in I went and there was a stillness in the room and my wife was crying and I sat down next to her and the doctors were talking in the way that they do. And I looked up at the ultrasound and our daughter was in utero, but she had a massive, there was a big black, looked like a ball in her stomach. And I tell you what, we didn't know what it was. We didn't know if it was a cyst. We didn't know if it was malignant. We didn't know what it would mean. They couldn't tell us anything. There was just questions, no answers. We didn't know what to do, but we knew that it was well beyond the size that would require operation. 
So there was a certain diameter that a growth has to be at. And then they'll operate. It was beyond that. So we, we had to deal with the idea of them maybe having, we didn't know whether or not she would survive in the womb. And then they wanted to maybe operate on her as she was being born. We just went home. We didn't know what to do. So we went home. We sat on our couch. We turned on some worship. And we just sang and cried. We sang and cried until a peace entered the room. We sang and cried until peace entered our hearts. A peace that defies understanding. We didn't get any more answers, but we got the sense, the assurance, someone is carrying us through this. Somebody has an answer. Somebody knows what's going on. This is all somehow in the gambit of God's divine plan. We sang until we knew he was in control. Until we knew he was carrying us. I'll carry you along. I'll save you. I'll deliver you. That word bear means I'll take the weight of you. Hallelujah. All the baggage. All the failure. Everything wrong. God says I'll take the weight of you. I'll gladly bear you deliver you. I'll give you a way of escape. Folks, he carried our sins while we were his enemies. What makes us think he will not carry us now that we are his children? There's a song, there's a lyric by a rapper called Andy Minio, and he says that the holes in your hands are the proof that you'll never drop me. The holes in your hands, Lord, are the proof that you'll never drop me in this life. Hallelujah. Are you carrying too much tonight? Are you carrying too much? Are you carrying the weight of your own life? Are you heavy laden? Are you burdened with worry? I want to get practical for a second. I want to give you a tool if I can. Anxiety is the byproduct of weight. Bear with me. Anxiety is the symptom that we're carrying too much weight. When I carry too much weight, my arches on my feet start to hurt. So when the pain, in my, when I get out of bed and I'm creaking like an old wooden ship and my arches hurt, I know I'm carrying more weight than I should carry. Anxiety, always, it's always the indication that we're carrying burdens Christ has promised that he would carry. You know, Being carried requires humility. It does. I remember when Jake Cassidy picked me up one Friday night in youth and carried me over his shoulder around this entire sanctuary. It uh, humbled me greatly. I was all talk until he carried me. But folks, maybe that's what's required tonight. What am I worrying about? What I'm worrying about is an indication toward what I'm carrying that I shouldn't be carrying. Concern is fine, but there is a point of humility where we say, yes, I'm worried about that, but Lord, I can't carry it. I'm not going to try. I'm not going to try and get out ahead of it in my mind, reason it out, figure it out, suss it out. I don't need to carry the burden of the what if all the time. Often humbling ourselves is the way through. Peter says in First Peter 5, 6, and 7, that if we are humble ourselves unto the mighty hand of God, in due time he'll exalt us, right? And then there's a comma, not a full stop, casting your cares upon him because he cares for you. Folks, there's two truths we need to grasp if we're going to let God carry us. The first is this. There is a mighty, sovereign hand. He's in control. Amen? He's in control and he cares for me. He cares for me. And he's in control. So I can cast something that I would otherwise carry. See, you will carry something until you know that the person you're casting that burden onto cares for you and is in control. So folks, let me encourage you with that tonight. Cast it off. I think I probably only have another point in me until we're out of time. Maybe just do another point pick this up another time. Who's holding my future tonight? We've spoken to people who are carrying their burdens, carrying the weight of life. Who is holding my future? What a question. 
Can I tell you, this is something I struggle with. This is something I battle with. This is something that, uh, that, that I need grace for. I'm on a journey. Who is in control of the course of my life? These are questions we all ask. If you've not asked it before, you will ask it. If you haven't asked it in a while, I'm sure you have before. Folks, the scriptures say he's the author of our futures. He's the author of our futures. Verse 8, remember this and stand firm. Recall it to mind you transgressors. Remember former things of old. I am God and there is no other. I am God and there is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning. And from ancient times, things not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand and I will accomplish all my purpose. And verse 11, I have spoken and I will bring it to pass. I have purposed and I will do it. Folks, there's no asterisk there. There's no if, there's no but, there's no comma, there's no small print. Hallelujah. This is not Ryanair. There is no hidden clause here. This is black and white Bible text tonight. Can we get an amen? Those God isn't stuttering or stammering. I have planned it, purposed it. I will do it. My counsel shall stand. What I say I will do, I will do. Psalm 138 verse 2 says that he has put his word above his name. What does that mean? It means that for God to not do what he said he would do, he would have to stop being God. He would have to stop being God because his name is faithful, because his name is true. And so for him to not do what he said he would do, he would have to stop being what he says he is. And God is what he is all the time. Hallelujah. He's not a man that he should lie or change his mind. Glory to God tonight. See, men can say something and not do it, but God's own word is his action. Glory. His word is his action. What he speaks, it's the same as his doing. So it's not, what God, what are you doing? But God, what have you said? Because whatever you say, it's already done in the heavens. Can I get an amen? It's already done in the heavens. It's already done in the, it's done in the spiritual. Hallelujah. Remember when God saw Abraham, he said, surely I'll make him into a nation. God came to Abraham by the oaks of Mamre. He's right there in Genesis 19. One man under a tree and God sees a nation. One man close to death and God sees a nation because to God, it was already done. The promise was already made. It was already fulfilled. Glory. Thank you, Lord. Oh, folks, fear of the future. We love to make plans, though. Amen? No, no control freaks here. That's fine. Okay. We love to make one-year, three-year, five-year plans. We love to have it all mapped out. My wife loves to make lists. Whenever I walk into the front room, it's usually I get back from church. It could be a night where I'm li- it's late. I just want to drink a Pepsi, and I want to chill out, and I'm coming, and my wife is wonderful, beautiful. She's on the ball. She is the absolute solution to the problem that is Patrick Dobbin. So I come in and there she is and she's got a little notepad and a pen and I'm like, here comes a list. (laughs) There is a list coming. So my wife loves to make lists and there's nothing wrong with making lists, especially when there are lists that my wife makes. But folks, sometimes plans are about our sense of security. Amen. It's true. It's easier to trust the false sense of security of our plans even though we have no real power to bring them about. That's the truth, isn't it? Well, as long as there's a plan, it doesn't even matter whether or not we can actually enact the plan, whether or not we have the power to bring the plan about, just as long as there's a plan. It's fine. No problem. We've no power, folks, to open doors or shut them. It's like the saying goes, want to make God laugh? Tell him your plans. Amen. Uh, I was tempted to go to James 4 and read uh, that passage about making plans. Uh, we should all say by the grace of God before we put, we attempt to put a plan in motion. But if we're honest, we're happy to come under the illusion of control. We're happy to come under it. And folks, if we're honest, control is a type of God. It's a type of God. Remember, this passage is all about God challenging other gods, false gods. And control is a false God. 
It is a false, I'll call it as it is tonight, it is a false God. Our attempts to control, our attempts to be in control, to have control, worshiping at the altar of our plans, it is a false God. And do you know what God does with false gods? He pushes them over. What happens when things spiral out of control? What happens when things move into uncertainty? Folks, where do you turn for assurance? Let me tell you this tonight. Past performance, looking back at your life, looking back maybe at your failures. I encourage you tonight, it's no guarantee of future results. Failures can't predict your future. Biology background can't tell you what your future is. And the false securities of money, career, plans can't predict your future. You can have money in the bank. You can have plans. You can have all of that. It is no assurance of your future. The only assurance of your future is that you know the author of your future. It's right here in the text. God says it. I am the only one who can tell you your future. I can, I'm the only one who can assure you. Hallelujah tonight. He is the author of life and the author and the finisher of our faith. And the text says here, he knows the end from the beginning. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Look, Isaiah 14. Uh, 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 the Lord of hosts has sworn, surely as I have planned, so will it be. Hallelujah tonight. As I have purposed, so will it stand. Praise the Lord. Psalm 139 says that all our days were written in his book from before even one of them was lived out. Praise the Lord tonight. Look at this. His plans can't be thwarted. Proverbs 19.21, many are the plans in the person's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. Psalm 33 verse 11, the counsel of the Lord stands forever. Hallelujah. The purpose of his heart to all generations. Listen, some of us are out here afraid that we can write in the crayon of our failures over his eternal book uh, containing the plans of our life. Oh, hallelujah. Some of us think that we can just grab the pen from the author of life and finish a book that he finished long ago. I said he finished the book long ago. You have to live the life out to see what genre the book is. But the ending is always the same. Glory, 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 resurrection, glory to the name of Jesus. Whatever the genre is, I'm praying for a comedy. So when things seem like they're out of control, they're just out of your control. They're just out of your control. That's okay. What a confidence tonight. It might be out of control, but it's just out of my control. It just feels that way. There's a confidence that it, for every believer that somehow whatever I'm facing, God is working it into a grand story that will reveal his son in me and through me. Hallelujah tonight. Isn't it wonderful that I can go through the full complement range of emotions in life? I can panic, I can fall apart, I can cry, I can shake my fist in the air, I can despair, I can fret, and I can worry because there's one who doesn't. There's one who doesn't. We can run around like headless chickens down here, but nothing takes heaven by surprise. Do you think when Adam fell at the beginning, God was up in heaven going, oh, Gabriel, any ideas? Michael, what do you think? What should we do? They ate from the tree. Hmm, does anyone, has anyone experienced this before? Has anyone got any past experience? Humanity's just fallen. It was a well-orchestrated plan. Jesus was the lamb that was slain from before the foundations of the earth. Heaven is never surprised. So even when we are, we can rest in the author who wrote our story. Hallelujah. And you know, folks, we get the word authority from the word author. Isn't that wonderful? So God doesn't have to author evil. That's the big theological conundrum that goes, God, the author of evil. God has authority over evil. So God can take trauma. God can take the malignant malevolence of life and bend it to his sovereign will 
Ephesians 1 tells us that he conforms all things to the pattern of his will. Romans 8.28 tells us he works for the good in all things because we're called according to the beloved and loved of God. Isn't it wonderful? He just, he, he, evil doesn't scare God. Why should it scare you? Why should it scare you when malevolence and malignance comes into your life? God is in authority because he's the author. The last thing I want to say about the author, because I reckon we're out of time. He's the author you can trust because he stepped into his own story to redeem us. Hallelujah. Listen to uh, C.S. Lewis. If Shakespeare and Hamlet could ever meet, it must be Shakespeare's doing. Hamlet could initiate nothing. When a Russian cosmonaut returned from space and reported that he had not found God, C.S. Lewis responded that this was like Hamlet going into the attic of his castle and looking for Shakespeare. C.S. Lewis wrote that if there is a God, we certainly don't relate to him as people on the first floor of a building relate to the people on the second floor. We relate to him in the way Hamlet relates to Shakespeare. We characters might be able to know a, quite a bit about the playwright, but only to the degree that the author chooses to put the information of himself in the play. Folks, on Calvary's Hill, God gave us the greatest disclosure of who he was as the author of life. I didn't just create life. I came to redeem it through my son, Jesus. Hallelujah. God demonstrated to all the players on the stage that he, the author, was eternally good, eternally just, but his mercy triumphed over his, over his justice. He showed each and every one of us at Calvary exactly who he was. Why should we be afraid concerning our future? Surely the author who loves us so much and the scriptures say has a plan for our lives to prosper us, to not to harm us, but to bring us to an expected end. Why should we fear when the mountains crumble and fall into the sea? I'm going to end on this point. I have another point. Maybe another time I'll touch on it. But folks, there is a practical application here for, for this. And it's right here in verse 8. Remember this and stand firm. Recall it to mind. Remember, God says, if you're afraid, uh, uncertain concerning your future, remember what I've done in the past. Remember what I've done in the past. There's power in remembrance. Amen? You know, Laura and I, uh, we, we, we've learned to, to do something I've called turn the page. Turn the page. So rather than just reacting when things go wrong, uh, we got news today, our car, our wonderful car, don't buy a French car. A wonderful car, nice, nice big old bill coming in again for an alternator, amazing. So rather than just throw our hands up in the air and be like, what's happening and why is everything going wrong, all that sort of thing, the Lord's taught us to turn the page. What do I mean by that? It means you don't know where the story's going to go. Don't skip paragraphs don't turn to the end, just turn the page. Keep reading. Keep tracking the story. God is doing something through it. We've learned to wait. That's what I mean by turn the page. We've learned to wait. Okay, this is going on, but let's just see what happens. Okay, this has happened. Okay, let's just wait. Let's just see what the Lord does. More often than not, the deadlines and the false time constraints that put us into a panic they're just a tool of the enemy to rob our joy. They're just the way the enemy gets into our hearts and, and takes the day from us. Usually when we turn the page and wait for the Lord, it's never quite as bad as we're afraid that it will be. So I want to encourage you to turn the page. But here it says in Psalm 78 verse 35, and they remembered that God was their rock. Remember, remember, beloved, who your rock is, and that the Most High was their Redeemer. You know, folks, if you're afraid, if there's an anxiety concerning your future, how things will work out, preach his testimony to yourself. When you need comfort in the face of uncertainty, that is what the past is for. 
Every experience God gives us, every person he puts in our lives is the perfect preparation for the future that only he can see. Today, I know that such memories are the key not to the past, but to the future. Hallelujah. I know that the experiences in the past, when we let God use them, become the mysterious and perfect preparation for the work he will give us to do. We can reach into the past for confidence for the future because he is a faithful God. He is a rock. He was a rock yesterday, today, and forever. We can reach into the past because our God doesn't change. We can expect what he did yesterday. And when I say yesterday, I don't just mean in your life. I also mean in the breadth of scripture. Hallelujah. When I say what he did yesterday, you can turn the pages of scripture and expect the God of Abraham, the God of Moses, the God of Jacob to be your God. Amen. And even if you haven't seen some of what happened, and now you may not part the Red Sea. If you do, come and see me after class. I've come talk to Pastor Nick if you part the Red Sea, right? But you will see, you will see problems part and give way as you step forward in faith. You, will, you may not be dropped into some Babylonian furnace, but you will be in situations far hotter than you could ever endure on your own. And God will bring you out without even the smell of smoke. And those who see you will see a fourth man in the fire. They'll see the Lord Jesus Christ because God doesn't know. It's, God can't, doesn't just bring you through suffering. He brings you through in style. Amen. He brings you through so that those who watch will be encouraged and will be brought to faith through your suffering. What a God we serve. I'm just going to stop here and pray if that's all right. And then I'll hand it to Pastor Nick. So we've seen two, two points now. I would just encourage you tonight. He's carrying you and he's the author of your future. So why should we worry? Why should we be afraid? God, bring us into rest tonight. Will you lift your hands with him? Will you stand all together and let's just pray. Lord Jesus lift your hands tonight because there's a rest for every believer the scriptures teach us oh lord we bless you tonight i thank you lord jesus that there is a rest for every believer lord and lord for every heart tonight holy spirit we pray that you would begin to break through with some of what we've heard oh god you are the god who carries you are a present father thank you lord we are not abandoned we are not left alone oh hallelujah lord Help us, Lord, to cast, Lord, what we can no longer carry because you are in control and because you care for us, O oh God. Help us, Lord, to be humble enough to simply be carried, Lord. Help us not to try and reason it out and work it out, figure it out, Lord. Help us just lay it at your feet, God. Oh, Lord, I thank you for that, that story about the footsteps in the sand, O oh God. And through the hardest of times, Lord, you were carrying us, Lord, not just through the hardest of times, but all the way, Lord. There's only one set of footsteps through this life, and they're yours, Lord, because you carried us, Lord, from the cradle to the grave, from birth, Lord, to death. You are our God. Oh, give us a confidence tonight, Lord. And God, I want to pray for those people who are fearful over their futures, Lord. God, I pray that they would, Lord, be encouraged, Lord, because they know the author, they know the author of their story. And like the song says, he's mine and I am his. Hallelujah. Lord, we know, Lord, that you have a perfect plan and you will bring it about by your grace alone. By grace, Lord. Grace, 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 Jesus. Thank you, Lord. What mountain is in front of us today? Oh, by grace, Lord, it will be leveled and the shouts will be grace to it. Hallelujah. We thank you today that you will winnow every mountain in our path. I thank you today, Lord God, that since you entered our story, Lord, and, and, and worked such a wonderful redemption, we can have a security. Lord, we can have a confidence. We have an expected end. You will bring us through. We worship you, Lord. Oh, help us to shake off the fear. Help us to shake off the anxiety. No matter what we see in society around us, Lord, you are in the boat with us. And you said, be still and know that I am God. And Lord, give us the grace to rest 
You are God and you will do it. You are God, you have said it and you will bring it to pass. Give us that confidence again as your children in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord, hallelujah. Thank God tonight. Thank you, praise God. Thank you, Pastor Patrick. The Lord bless you all tonight. You know, it's no accident that we broke bread tonight because the, the entire Christian focus is always on remembering the cross of Jesus. And that's our confidence tonight. When, whatever you're going through, when you remember that Christ has paid for your sin, your shame, he has died the debt you should have died. His resurrection is the guarantee that you're going to rise again and you will not be kept down and that you will, you will dwell forever with him. It gives you a confidence to get through your, whatever you're going through. You know, he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Remember this and be brave, as it says in verse 8 here in Isaiah. Be brave, Christian. Stand up tonight. Whatever, whatever weight is on you, whatever attack when the enemy is on you, be brave. Have courage. Trust God. Amen. Turn the page. Walk by faith. Amen. That's an act of faith. Don't panic. Don't tear the page out. Don't leave. Don't stop reading. Don't drop out of life. Amen. Remember the cross. Jesus won the victory. The powers of darkness were broken. Amen. The grave was defeated. And so you and I have every right as Christians to stand in the victory of Christ tonight. I'm mindful that there might be one or two here. Maybe someone watching online that you're on a journey with God. And I know we've gone a little bit over tonight, but I'm, I'm grateful that we have. The Lord is here tonight and speaking to us. But I can't leave the opportunity to go tonight. If you're watching online, if you're here in the house tonight and you have never come to that born again experience, where, which, which you have to. Jesus said, unless a man is born again, he can never see the kingdom of heaven. Born of heaven. That's where the Holy Spirit comes in and changes you from the inside out, not the outside in, from the inside out. You can't be born again into a family. You can't be born again into a religion. You have to be born again by the Spirit of God. It is a real spiritual event that takes place, and it only happens when you, out of your free will, and out of, your, out of an honest heart, come to Jesus Christ and say, forgive me my sins, and name them out to him if you can remember them. If you can't remember them all, just say, Lord, there's so many I can't even remember, but oh God, I'm a sinner. Forgive me all my sins, and I give you my life. And I want you to give me your life. Then he gives the Holy Spirit. At that very moment, the Holy Spirit comes into your body. He lives in you like a temple. And that's when you become born again. That's when the seed of the gospel is in you. And then that seed gets watered over time. It begins to grow. It turns into a tree. There's fruit in it. Knowledge develops into your life as a person. You grow in the virtues and character of Christ. That's what a Christian is. And I can't leave tonight. We can't close this service down. There may be someone here ready to give their life to Jesus. So if there is tonight, I want every head bow, every eye closed. I want no one to feel intimidated. No one is watching you. If you want to give your life to the Lord tonight, only you're going to know this and you can share with others if you wish to. I hope that you will. But if you want to give your life to the Lord and become a Christian and have that confidence, then just put your hand up where you're standing. Nobody's going to know about me and you and I won't shame you in any way. If you want to give your heart to Christ, you've never given your life to the Lord Jesus, put your hand up tonight and say, I want to give my life to the Lord. I'm not going to pray up here for you and God was going to meet you. If there's just one here tonight, do that. If there's somebody online, raise your hand tonight. Amen. God bless you. I see, I see a hand down there. God bless you. I see a hand down there. God sees you tonight. God sees you. You're on a wonderful journey with him. He loves you. I just want to tell you right now, he loves you. He's always loved you. You could never be any more lovable to him. He doesn't look at your sin. He sees what you could be and what you now are because you stepped into him and he is now your savior. So we're going to pray this prayer. The whole church can join with me. There might be somebody online, someone watching. You could be watching this weeks away from the live service here tonight. God has still brought you here because you're on a journey. We're all going to pray for you here at Cork Church, even for those in the future that might hear this message message. But for those here tonight, we're going to pray this prayer. And this is the prayer that makes you a Christian if you pray it from a sincerity and an honesty to the Lord. Now everybody, let's pray and help that person tonight really connect with their faith with God. Heavenly Father, I thank you that you brought me here tonight to hear, Lord, such truth that you are the author of my life and you're the only one that can bring it to a righteous end. I've gone my own way. But even in the midst of that, you never abandoned me. I always knew you were there. I just couldn't find you or see you. But tonight I know. Tonight I've heard. Tonight I've sensed. And I freely come to you. 
And I ask you to forgive me all my waywardness, my many unflattering sins. And would you cleanse me from that? And God, more than all that, would you come into my life and fill me with the Holy Spirit and make me a Christian person? I ask this with all my heart. I give you what's left in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Well, I know tonight one gave their life to the Lord here. And it's, I will not, I promise you, I will not embarrass you. You want to share what God's doing in your heart with another. It's a great thing to do because you let your light shine. Because God's going to use you to lead others to him. And you're at the start of a journey. You're not at the end of it. You're at the start. You're going to grow in your faith. You're going to grow in your understanding. And God is going to use your life mightily. The devil tried to abuse you and he's hurt you over the past. But Christ has healed you, healing you, and is going to bring great fruit out of your life. I promise you that tonight. And you online, I don't know who if we ever meet. But if you ask that Lord into your heart tonight and you pray that prayer wherever you are on this planet, God heard you. You might be sitting in your car. You might be in your one-bed apartment somewhere. You might be on a bus with headphones and you know, it doesn't matter. God has heard you. And the first thing you do after you pray a prayer like this, you say, thank you for hearing me. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for forgiving me. And I just want to welcome you to the, the worldwide body of Jesus, multis of millions of us around the world. You're part of that body now. God bless you. Father, we thank you for your presence tonight, Lord, for your most eloquent and faith-building word, God, for the table of the Lord that we, Lord, came around to remember, Lord, with such, with such uh, uh, an anointing, Lord, for the worship, Lord, that led us, Lord, into your presence, God. For, Lord, just your goodness to each one, Lord. We pray you bless us as we leave. Bless us as we go out, Lord God. Whatever tomorrows we have, help us to live for you, I pray. In Jesus' precious name, amen and amen. Let's give the Lord praise tonight. Please don't run out. we got to uh, do it for me. John is informing me. they got lovely chips downstairs, teas, coffees, and we want you to enjoy yourselves. God bless you all.